Y'all already know what time it is. It's time for comment shout outs. <laughs> First, comment shout out. Y'all already know, goes to my girl Oaks. She's always down below. Second, HFM family. He's back in action. <laughs> Three, goes to Alicia Martinez. Hey girl, thank you for commenting down below. Fourth, YT Link. Thanks for commenting. And y'all know, like y'all know, like y'all know. I appreciate all your comments. Keep them coming, like keep them coming and leave them down below. What is good everyone? What is good? Welcome to another Squad Talk. Huh. <laughs> and in this edition of Squad Talk, I'll be talking about self-confidence. Recently, one of my supporters messaged me and told me about her struggles of being a dark skinned, lovely, melanated, chocolate, beautiful queen and feeling kind of, you know, not where she wants to be with her confidence. She wanted me to make this video, so why not? You know, if this could help just one person, if this video can help her, hopefully can help others as well. I'll be sharing some tips that helped me and giving some background on me and my self-confidence and how it's grown throughout the years and some tips that I use to help grow my self-confidence. So y'all already know, you already know, if you think the melanin is popping, you know what to do. You gotta keep on watching. To give y'all a little bit of a backstory, I am a tall girl. I've been tall my whole life, um, always been the tallest in all my classes in kindergarten, pre-K <laughs> to high school. High school is kind of when it got a little bit better. There is a lot more people that were developing and getting taller. So I was not the tallest anymore, but I've always been used to being the tallest in the room. Being taller than everyone else, you're kind of put in like, oh, she's manly, like she's, she's this, that whole like stigma. And I never seen myself like that, but at a sense that does take a toll when it comes to your confidence, because it's like they're trying to force you into a box. Being tall honestly forced me to have a backbone. <laughs> Being tall forced me to be confident. Um, I remember vaguely in kindergarten, no one really wanted to be my friend. So I was like, mm, cause I was looked at as the freaky tall girl. Recess, I play by myself. I'd eat by myself during lunch. And that really taught me, okay, you know, I'm all I got, so I mean, it is what it is. It hurt, yeah, kids can be rude, kids can be cruel, <laughs> but I feel like that really put and set into my mind at an early age that I have to be confident and I have to own what I have because automatically when I walk into the room, all eyes are on me since I'm just a beautiful Amazonian woman. <laughs> So it's like, okay, you know, I gotta wear this tallness and own it. And being tall, like I had to own it. I had to own who I was at a very young age. So that definitely helped a lot when it came to confidence because I know a lot of tall women grow up and they're very timid. They're very insecure because of the standards of you're tall men, you're taller than a lot of men, you should, be timid because you're tall. But I mean, to be honest, there's a reason why tall women are looked at to be models. Not saying everything's about looks or like features, or whatever, but being tall to me is a blessing. At a young age, I had to kind of build and fester a strong exterior because a lot of bullying entailed. And on top of that, I'm African. <laughs> I am Nigerian. I'm a proud, Nigerian, I am Nigerian. Oh, well, you know, you had the tall aspect and then you had the Nigerian aspect. You had the people on one hand, African booty scratcher. You're an African booty scratcher. <laughs> Calling me all these stereotypical 
African insults. Now that Black Panther came out and all that, Wakanda. Wakanda forever! Wakanda forever and never to part. Wakanda forever, it's true. And don't you know I would move heaven and earth to make Wakanda forever and see you? And all that came out. I love it. It is what it is. And more people are accepting Africans and it's more like a fad. All right, we get it, we get it. But I personally will not forget about all the bullying I went through when it came to being African. I mean, we will forgive but I will not forget. <laughs> so like I said, the African aspect and then the tall aspect, you mix that all together. And that's a lot of teenagers being rude, children being rude, all that stuff. Real tough. And I didn't take it though. One thing I gave myself is that even though I was bullied, I bullied right back. Like, <laughs> hey, you're not coming for me and expecting me not to come back for you. I've always been taught from my parents to stand up for myself. So that helped me a lot too, okay? I had strong Nigerian parents that taught me, okay? No one's messing with you. To wrap this whole backstory up, when it came to me, I had to learn to be confident or endure, have an identity and accept the way I looked at a very young age due to the way I was built as a person and all of that um, culture. <laughs> Second, another way that confidence does come to you is with age. Honestly, I feel like with every year of my life, the more I gain some type of self-identification, I learn more self-worth and I appreciate myself more. High school was a little bit hard. I remember one guy I really liked in high school um, I know every dark skinned woman goes through this where you're looked at as lesser than. And on top of that, I went to a very white high school, but you're looked at as maybe the bottom of the totem pole. That's what they want us to believe. I don't believe it. You shouldn't believe it either. We are beautiful melanated queens. <laughs> but at a certain point, when you keep on seeing these white women or these white girls being put on a pedestal, especially in the environment that you're in, you you know, you start to feel a little bit inferior. I remember there was one instance, I really, really liked this guy in high school, and he was like, you don't pass the brown paper bag rule. I was like, what? Like, what is the brown paper bag rule? He told me that I have to be lighter than a brown paper bag like the ones you put your sandwiches and all that stuff for lunch. I had to be lighter than that, that bag, for him to even date me or look at me. And I was like, you know what? It's all right. <laughs> my best friend, Oz, she's my road dog. Honestly, I don't know how I would have survived high school without her, but me and her kind of endured that same thing because me and her are both a darker in complexion. I'm not gonna lie, that made me feel some type of way, but at the moment, I was like, fine. Okay, you don't want me, someone else will. And in high school, honestly, that helped me a lot because first of all, I wasn't running around messing with all these nasty boys in high school. All those people that had something to say to me and all those people that peaked in high school. I mean, have y'all seen their pictures? <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, like, can we keep it real? We're like wine, baby. We getting better with age. While those age like milk. Okay, let's get it clear. So if any of y'all girls like me, that are dark skinned, beautiful queens that are going through something like that in high school, you just gotta keep in mind, you're getting better with age. All them dudes and all them girls that thought they were better than you, that peaked in high school, <laughs> it's going down for them. This is you going up, this is them going down. So keep that in mind. You are a strong, beautiful queen and just know that you will get better with age, period, poo. Take it from your girl, take it from me, okay? I am living proof. <laughs> yes, get that right. Number three thing that I still do until now to help me with my confidence is taking pictures. If you're someone 
that is not very confident in the way that you look, taking pictures, I'm telling you, makes you appreciate your beauty. If you're constantly looking at yourself, you're constantly having to kind of take in that information about yourself. And yes, I know looks are not all, okay? We have to be honest with ourselves. We have to be honest. The way that we look does play a big part of about how we feel. I remember there was one time I was feeling kind of low. Like I was like, damn, I think it was like in middle school when I was in eighth grade. That's when I first transferred schools and I was like, wow, people really aren't messing with me like that. Or I was feeling like, damn, I really don't have no one out here. But I was like, you know what, I'm enough. And then I looked in the mirror and I was like, sorry, I get emotional. <laughs> I don't know why I'm getting emotional. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. I don't like to show a lot of emotion, but I looked in the mirror and I was like, you know what? It's not getting any better than this. It's not getting any better than this. So I have to accept how I look in this mirror and accept who I am. It ain't changing from this. I only got one body, one person, and I have to accept who that is. You know, that helped me a lot. That's why, once again, going back to taking pictures, that's why I love taking pictures and being like, okay, because it forces me to look at myself. It forces me to accept what I see in those pictures. We all have those days where we're not feeling the best about ourselves, and taking pictures and looking back at pictures when I'm like, ooh, okay, like, okay, B. Okay, B, you looking good. You might not be looking good, right now to yourself in your mind you're telling yourself you're not looking good right now but if i can look back on those pictures when i think i was slain then i'm like okay you know like you still a bad bitch <laughs> so definitely take pictures and learn to accept yourself for who you are like just look in that mirror and be like this is as good as it's gonna get baby so you might as well love who you are because you ain't gonna be no one else like you can't fix yourself unless you do plastic surgery but I don't know about y'all but I can find better things to do with my money but <laughs> that's for another subject for another time I'm just saying that you know you gotta accept yourself for who you are when you look in that mirror you gotta look at yourself <laughs> number four is making sure you got friends that gas you up or have people around you that gas you up. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, honey, like when I think about it from high school on, even before that, I made sure I kept people around me that had the same vibe, okay, that could gas me up when I'm feeling low. Y'all need to have those friends that you put on that outfit, even though you're not feeling 100, that will make you feel 100, okay? Yes, like I said, you shouldn't, rely on outside sources to make you feel good about yourself but damn it it sure helps <laughs> it sure helps when you have those people around you gassing you up like that helps so make sure y'all have people around you that make you feel good about yourself honestly like a supportive environment is the best and the fifth the fifth one i think this is my last one <laughs> fifth tip i can give to building your self-confidence is just finding things that you love about yourself. Looking in the mirror and being like, damn, okay, my eyes are beautiful, my lips are beautiful, okay? I like the way my, you know, my my body dips out, or I like the little dimples, if you have dimples. You can find things about yourself that you're like, damn, this is bomb as fuck, like, this is me. This is real, this is me. <laughs> as the years go by, the more things you'll find that you really dig about yourself, that you like about yourself, your appearance and all that. Confidence is not built in a day. <laughs> Trust me, okay? It will take years before you're truly comfortable with yourself to the point where, you know, you feel good about yourself. And we even have those days where we're not really feeling it. But, you know, you gotta keep on going. Like, life does not stop for no person, okay? So, you will get there, trust me. You will get to a point where you feel confident about yourself. Hopefully, I was able to help y'all 
in the confidence spectrum and hopefully this video helped the young lady that asked me in my dms she's a supporter so thank you so much for supporting me and like i said y'all keep on working at building your confidence every day and trust me it will get there it's an uphill battle i'm telling you and all those people that are making you feel bad about the way that you look they'll be nothing okay they will be nothing they will not even be at your level at a certain point so don't worry now they're just jealous in you trust me those people will not be <laughs> nobodies like they'll be nobodies in a couple years sorry but not sorry so just keep on working on yourself and using these tips y'all know like i always say please give this video a thumbs up down below make sure you comment okay make sure you comment if you want to get featured in my next video and most of all y'all make sure you tap or click the subscribe button down below and i will see you in my next video peace hey hey Pride's gonna be the death of me. Hold up. When you know you gotta guard your energy. You can't match my pedigree. Now you gotta pay a fee. This